Um, Nick Roberts. It's BBC News. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, on the morning after the night before, did you not think I'm hooked up to someone for five years who I barely know and have barely spoken to? And is the country now under permanent joint leadership? Will we see you again and again at each other's sides, talking to prime ministers and presidents, declaring war, saving the economy? Is that how it's going to be? Well, you're getting a bit advanced, I think, <laughs> on uh, some of those ideas. What I woke up this morning thinking um, was not just the huge responsibilities that now land on my shoulders, but thinking this is so much better than the alternative. Yeah. There's really some things we can do over these next five years to sort out the country's problems, to give people power and control over their lives, to sort out our politics. And a great sense, actually, of sort of inspiration and excitement hit me that this is much more than what could have been. And I think we've taken perhaps the more difficult path, but the far more worthwhile one. Are we going to do things together? Yes, of course, we should. This is not just a two teams trying to work together. It's two teams trying to form one strong team in government. Of course, we are separate parties, and uh, we've already talked about the Thursk and Walton by-election. By um, perhaps we'll share a car to save the um, petrol. Get, um, out, get out on opposite sides. Um, but, but of course we should do things together, because this is a joint endeavour, uh, not two competing teams trying to occupy office at the same time. Um, Adam Bolton, Sky. Um, Sky News, um, just, just picking up on that, um, I was wondering... Uh, on the sort of political reform agenda, uh, what plans do you have, if any, to reform Prime Minister's questions uh, in the House of uh, Commons, whether you're going to do monthly Prime Ministerial news conferences, whether those will be double acts. Uh, and just finally, um, you both signed up for a five-year term. Uh, that would be 10 years if you were re-elected uh, or if, if Mr Cameron was re-elected. Can we assume that the next general election would be the last one you'd fight? In other words, you would, t <laughs> you would, you would, you would term limit yourself at a maximum of 10 years. That is, um, that is taking me a bit further than I'm ready to go. Um, on the, the Prime Minister's questions and, and all of that, that is one thing we, we have discussed, that uh, Prime Minister's questions, uh, obviously I will answer as, as Prime Minister if I'm away. Nick will stand in as Deputy Prime Minister and answer those questions. It's obviously going to be quite a different uh, beast, Prime Minister's questions. In terms of press conferences, we haven't discussed that. We're going through a range of things uh, and working out how best to make the coalition work in a, in a proper, positive way. But most of the areas we've looked at, actually, we found agreement quite, quite quickly. One of the things that I think encouraged both of us that this was the right thing to do was the way the negotiating teams worked together. Danny Alexander and Oliver Letwin and William Hague and Chris Hune, they were finding, as they went through areas, there were good ways of resolving differences. The thing about the agreement, which we have now published, is it does bite off the difficult areas first and say, look, let's resolve those, and then we have the full coalition agreement, which will go through some of the more familiar territories. So, in as far as we're resolving these issues, I'd say it's going very well. Yeah, I mean, can I, I mean... You can ask lots of what happens next, what happens next. I mean, there's going to be a lot of change. I mean, I've been, I've been advocating new politics for a long time. This is what new politics looks like. And it means that in other parts of our politics, things will look differently as well. Uh, and I think we've just got to, we're just proceeding with a very open mind about how to do that. About the, the whole Pumpkin Judy approach, which I think you both criticise, whether you think Prime Minister's questions as that concept even works any longer. Different, because obviously I'm not going to be answering Nick's questions, but he's going to be answering some of mine. So that is a signal of. Um, because if I'm not there, what well, if I'm not there, you're going to be answering my oh, questions. Oh, I see, right. Yeah. I'm, that's <laughs> confusing. I'm looking forward to a lot of foreign travel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, obviously looking forward to answering questions from Harriet Harman. Um, uh, John Snow. Could I just ask you a bit more about the, uh, the biology, Prime Minister? Where, where will Nick Clegg actually function from? Will he be in Downing Street with you? Does he have an office in there? Will he live at number 11 in some way? Or what, what, what's the deal? If the phone rings at three in the morning and... Well, do you both have to answer it? <laughs> Nick, is, um, Nick is Deputy Prime Minister. He is going to be responsible for uh, political reform. So many of the questions have been raised about fixed-term parliaments and that will be his responsibility. He has uh, the Deputy Prime Minister's office in the Cabinet office, will be working 
Uh, we haven't yet explored all each other's uh, offices, but it's pretty close together. Um, this is not going to be a partnership where we have to book meetings or, uh, you know, there is a schedule there's phone calls. Yeah, you know? there's, a, there's a corridor that links number 10 to where I am, but I have no idea where I am. It's a, it's a rabbit warren in there, but it's, uh, it's in close proximity to each other. Excellent. Very good. No, but they're permanently open, I'm told. Sorry, Tom Bradbury. I'm tempted to say that what you really meant to say in the election campaign was, I agree with Nick. But anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, this is a charming love-in, but what sceptics say is that the left of the Liberal Democrat Party and the right of the Tory party are so far apart that however much you might have the best of intentions, it can just never hold together for very long. Well, I want to make, this will succeed through its success. If we can demonstrate that this is a good government, a long-term government, taking difficult decisions in the national interest, that we are working well together, that it has this common purpose that Nick's spoken about. If it does that, then people, as you're, you're right in saying that, people, whatever wing of whatever party, will see a good government and will respect that. What, what is politics and public... It's all about public service in the national interest. If we can demonstrate that's what we're delivering, whatever person or whatever wing of whatever party will say this is a good government. That's the only way you convince people. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there are always going to be sceptics and there are always going to be a thousand and one reasons why you don't try something new. Uh, are, are both of us taking big risks? Yes. Are both our parties taking a very, very big step, which is historically utterly different to what has happened in the past? Yes. I mean, I've been locked uh, with my colleagues into, you know, to discussions the last several nights into the, into the small hours, uh, struggling with this, talking about it. In the end, there was an overwhelming, overwhelming support in my parliamentary party and in the federal executive of the Liberal Democrats for this because we all collectively recognised it was the right thing to do for the country at this time and that we could do it together. And we will now have to show the sceptics who uh, uh, that it will go wrong that they are wrong. Uh, Andy Bell. Thank you. Andy Bell, Five News. First of all, congratulations to you both, Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister. Secondly, Prime Minister, do you now regret when once asked what your favourite joke was, you replied, Nick Clegg, and Deputy Prime Minister, that? I, we're all going to have... I, I'm afraid I did oh, once. Right. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, we're all... Come back! We're all going to have um, things that we said um, thrown back at us. And, and, you know, there's a serious point in this, which is, if you want to spend the next five years finding Lib Dem politicians who slightly disagree with Conservative politicians about this or a slightly nuanced policy, you can find lots. But we're looking at the bigger picture. We're looking at what a bold move like this with a strong, stable government can achieve. And if it means swallowing some humble pie, and if it means eating some of your words, I cannot think of a more excellent diet in which to provide the country with good government. Should we have some newspapers just to spread this around? Yes, sorry, here we are. Imke Henkel in Focus magazine from, from Germany. Could you ask you something specific about your European uh, policy? In your um, coalition agreement, I read that um, and you are apparently not um, going so far that you um, opt for repatriating the three powers you talked about before. So is that actually something that um, the Liberal Democrats um, got in, in, in favour. And just a specific question to, you, to the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, did you actually go to Germany and learn something about coalition talks there from, uh, from the Liberal Party there? <laughs> I had a very good conversation yesterday with Chancellor Merkel about European policy, but also about um, learning some lessons about coalitions, where she is um, something of, a, of, a, of an expert. Um, we've reached agreement on a, a common position on, on European policy, and it's set out in the document. And I think that demonstrates, if you take an area like that, where are, there are differences, and we haven't hidden them, we've confronted them and resolved them. And I think that is a little test, if you like, of how serious we are in our endeavour to provide this, this good government. It sets out very clearly in the agreement exactly what we aim to do. George Parker from the FT. Yes, um Back in uh, 2004, this is a question for uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, Vince Cable said that uh, the abolition of the DTI would be the largest act of deregulation 